got on the list this morning. Winston, Florida, roughly 8.30 in the morning. Train, Q452. Miami to Waycross mixed freight daily. If you have gone on my community section and read the July update, and if you haven't by now, please go do so before you watch the rest of this video, you will have heard that Q452 and 453 now switch Winston Yard, and this is the move that we are catching right now. He won't be exactly switching anything, he is just going to be dropping off roughly 50 rock loads bound for Tampa coming out of Miami's Chrome Quarry. Also, I do not end up catching Q453 within this video, but I'm sure within a video sometime soon I will catch him and his move whenever he does this as well. Also, something to note, as of right now, CSX has been running a lot of X453s and X452s, seemingly to handle the traffic that Q452 and 453 can't handle on their own. Not saying the trains themselves couldn't handle it, but the company or rather the knuckles on each car aren't too fond of long trains such as 17,000 feet possibly in length. Four fifty two spends about an hour and a half in the Winston area dropping off his loads and getting his crew change. By the time that's done, we make our trip down to Plant City to catch him rounding the curve and heading on to the S line, which will now be him and 453's normal routing. We aren't looking at 452 ZOT for very long because we took off after hearing a report on a special train headed to Mosaic Big Bend Terminal. This is also the place where the Tico coal trains come in to unload and I knew that the leader on this train that we were about to catch was foreign but I wasn't expecting what the entire lash up was. That's right, in Apollo Beach, Florida, a Union Pacific SD-70ACE, an NS SD-60E, and an NS ES-40DC. This was a train that I had never caught before. This is CSX train K301-28. This is apparently an empty phosphate train from Mosaic Big Bend Terminal to New Wales Phosphate Processing Plant. This job run engines light to wherever the empty train is, in this case it's empty, picks up the train and then brings it to New Wales. In this case, the power that they took from Yeoman was this power set that came down a few days ago on a K42322 loaded ethanol for Tampa. Since we knew that these guys were heading into the terminal to pick up a train, we knew that in a matter of time he'd be right back. And an hour and a half later, so he was. 80 empty phosphate flip tops headed back to the large New Wales processing plant for phosphate.
These cars are specially designed for transporting diammonium phosphate from the New Wales Processing Facility to Rockport and here at Big Bend. For a while, I thought that Rockport was the only customer to get these cars as they were the only ones that I knew had a rotary dumper which is what these cars are also designed for. But apparently Big Bend has one too or else they wouldn't be getting these cars. This was a train that no doubt in my mind we were giving chase to. And we were doing quite well. However, another surprise popped up. Coming around the corner from Tampa was CSX train K340-26, another one of the infamous Bone Valley locals that goes back and forth all day from customers like East Tampa, Rockport, and Big Bend transporting diammonium phosphate. This one was on his way to East Tampa, or the Riverview facility. This one had one of CSX's brand new ST70AHs in the lead. Now, disregarding my laziness to make my video of them, I have already caught two of these on another Bone Valley train and I'll make a dedicated video of them when I feel like it. On the other side of this ordeal, the explanation behind the ST-70s, they're also known as the SD-70 ACE Tier 4s that CSX ordered 10 of from Progress Rail earlier this year. They have just been delivered to CSX not even a month ago, so they are still pretty new, so if you rail fan the Tampa area, I'd say try to catch some of these before they lose their shine. Slowing down to come into the East Tampa facility, the K30128 with the three special units on it is not too far behind, or in front of I should say, this K340. The K30128 had to stop just south of the Riverview switch to let this train get into the East Tampa facility. And once they cleared that switch, they took off, to the point where by the time we even got a couple of crossings north, we could barely catch them in time. We left almost immediately after the locomotives went by, hoping to gain some distance on them and catch them by the time we hit Tampa. But even on a Sunday afternoon at 2.30 p.m., Tampa traffic said that's not gonna work. By wrong, I mean it took us 30 miles before we got ahead of this train again. 30 miles of twisting through back streets, country roads, whatever you could probably think of, just to get all the way to the New Wales facility before this train lost some speed and we were able to gain on him a little bit because of the road format down there. So, 30 miles later, here we are at the New Wales Phosphate Facility, the largest phosphate processing plant in the world. Now, this spot, no doubt, was the hottest it was all day. There was at least 75% humidity, as well as a 97 degree sun right overhead, and there were no clouds in front of the sun, so it was constant heat. Adding to my point about this being the hottest spot of the day, my camera, about midway through the train, literally overheated and would not come back on because the sun would not quit. So by the time the end of the train got by, I had to film it with my phone. Not as good a quality, no doubt, but oh well. When I say my camera wouldn't come back on, no, it's not broken, it just needed some time to cool down before I could use it again. And that would conclude our very hot Sunday here in Lithia, Florida at the New Wales Phosphate Facility.
This is Coda Beaner, and I will see you next time on the Sunshine State Rails.